All right, so let's talk about latches. So what are they? Well, here's the clinical definition. They are lightweight synchronization primitives that are used by a SQL Server engine to guarantee consistency of in-memory structures. And that is really quite obtuse. So let's go down to see if we can't uh, make this definition a little more lucid. All right, so here are some properties of latches. They're used by the SQL engine. Uh, they're similar in theory to locks, but they're, they're not locks. Um, you and I have control over locks. Uh, we don't have control over latches. They're used solely by the engine. Uh, there is no direct access path to the subsystem. When SQL Server requests a page on the disk, uh, it uses a latch to read that page into the buffer pool. Um, then it's read or whatever's done to it, it's manipulated, right? So latches are lightweight, yes, much lighter than than locks. And there's even a deeper layer of of these mechanisms, uh, and they're called spin locks, but we won't get into that right now. So uh, they're held during the duration of the operation and released. Uh, locks are held during the duration of the transaction. All right. Latches are in-memory structures. Now that's a big deal because that that really is key to the definition. Uh, these are all in memory uh, little mechanisms that uh, do the locking. All right, so latches guarantee the consistency of memory structures. Yes, they do. Data pages, indexes. So the good part is there are only three kinds of latches. And there are only really two that we're going to see in the wild, so to speak. So we've got the page latch. It's in the buffer pool. And you can see there's an example page latch share. There's the second one is the one we're going to see a lot, the one we see most often when we're looking at weight stats. And that's because we have uh, the vast majority of subsystems out there are the, the point of contention uh, in SQL servers. So that's the IO. Notice the IO in the middle. So that's a page IO latch. It's on the disk, but has the potential to be pulled into the buffer pool. And then there are some non-buffer pool latches. Uh, these are, there are a lot of them. <laughs> so we won't focus on those, but it's, it's a latch that's not in a buffer pool. So the two uh, most common types of latches are page latches and page IO latches. So we're going to see those the most. Just a little aside there on the note. All right, so let's talk about the buffer latches, These the, the two most common. All right, so the, they're used to protect the page in the buffer pool, and the IO latches are used to protect the pages not loaded into the pool yet. So in our little graph, we could see we have a, a buffer latch, and he's protecting that page. And the, the red box it represents, inside the red box, is the buffer pool. Um, interestingly, we control the buffer pool. A lot of people think that the min and max setting in SQL Server here, I'm talking a little bit about the, the, the text at the bottom, uh, that the min and max setting uh, controls the amount of memory SQL uses, but it, it doesn't. Um, we can't control the amount of SQL, the memory SQL Server consumes. Uh, what the min and max setting actually controls the amount of uh, memory used by the buffer pool. Again, just another aside. So, just like locks, latches have modes. And here we can see a page latch share, and we can see we've got an exclusive lock. So, we go back to our down to our little. Uh, diagram at the bottom, and we, it's a buffer latch, and the page is in the memory pool. So if it's in, in the, it's if it's in the memory pool, right? And he's taken a a latch out against that particular page, then it's a page latch, all right? Which makes sense. If it's red, then it's a share. If it's anything else, then it's an exclusive. Now the big one. The, uh, and a lot of people will get this confused. They, you'll see uh, posts at different locations and uh, where the page latch and they think it's page IO latch and the IO is the, really those two little letters are important. All right, so we've got the, the buffer latch. Our little blue box is the buffer latch. And you can see he's, uh, he's taking a page that's on the disk, right? The page is not in the pool yet. And he's pulling it into the buffer pool. Again, this uh, gets back to our direct access to the to the disk that in SQL Server there is no direct access pass to the disk. At any time a page is read from disk, it's read in the buffer pool first. All right, so the page goes into the buffer pool, and that creates a page I/O latch. 
and you can see I have another little side over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it says, uh, this is how the, this uh, circular motion of of the buffer page page I.O. latches with the, the buffer latches taken uh, a page in the disk and then reads it into the pool. That's how 99% of all database corruption occurs. Uh, the page traveling from the disk uh, either down to uh, through the I.O. stack or back up through the I.O. stack into the buffer pool. I always thought that was interesting. So again, we've got our friend the page I.O. latch and thank you, no thank you, let's not update that right now. So we've got our page I.O. latch, we've got our buffer pool here we are. So when when the buffer latch takes a latch out and he wants to pull something from the disk, that page from the disk, and pull it back into the buffer pool to be read or written or whatever he wants it, whatever he wants done to it. Uh, if the disk isn't ready, page I/O latch weights build up, and this is one of the things we can see when we see when uh, the disk subsystem isn't up to par. We see lots and lots of page I/O latches. And the more page I.O. latches you see, the higher they are as a percentage, uh, the greater the possibility or the probability that our problem is with this, the disk subsystem. So now we know just a little bit about latches. How can these latches help us to troubleshoot SQL Server?